Uh, well, my name is Dan Leniger. I'm a water conservationist at the Upper Big Blue NRD. What I'm going to talk about briefly is uh, kind of maybe expand a little bit on what Aaron's talked about as far as some of the regulations when it comes to farming in a uh, high nitrate management zone. The three main requirements is to uh, have some type of soil moisture equipment in one of your fields, and then also to, uh, if you're continuous corn, is to uh, take soil tests, uh, shallow, zero to eight inch, and also a deep sample, which is eight to 24 inches. And then also, uh, final thing is to fill out a, a report form on the, on the farms that are in this in this management zone, basically it's uh, what you what you did last year as far as crops that you grow grow amount of nitrogen you used if it was corn, and what your plans are for those fields this coming year. So let's just start with the soil moisture measuring equipment. What we have here, what we sell, are the watermark sensors. Uh, this is the most popular form, measuring soil moisture as it's the least expensive, but it's still it's still very reliable and, and works really well. And you can uh, these sensors cost roughly about uh, twenty dollars a piece, and you have the option of of reading these sensors with a handheld meter, which is shown uh, to the right, or you can uh, use a uh, data logger and this will record your readings every eight hours so you don't have to walk out in the field and manually hook up uh, the sensor wires to the handheld meter. Uh, this data logger will read them for you every eight hours and at the end of the year you can uh, we can download that information on a graph and it'll show you uh, what each sensor did was reading uh, every eight hours throughout the irrigation season. Uh, I mentioned soil sampling as one of the requirements if you're uh, growing corn on corn. If you're growing corn and switching to soybeans, you do not need to soil test for us. Also, if it was soybeans last year and you're going to corn this year, you are not required to take a turn in a soil test for us. Just if it was corn last year, and in that same field is gonna be corn again the next year. And one of, the, one of the reasons it's important to soil test is that you know how much residual nitrate nitrogen you have left over from the previous crop. And you could use that as a credit and, and use that much less fertilizer for the next year. Also, uh, over irrigation, is uh, probably one of the biggest culprits when it comes to uh, leaching nitrate nitrogen into the groundwater. Um, and uh, so the more efficient you are with the irrigation, the less potential for leaching of nitrate nitrogen below the root zone. When you go to read a soil test, uh, after you've taken a test for nitrate nitrogen, it'll, it'll give you your uh, amount of nitrate nitrogen left over in parts per million. And basically, if you wanna know what that is in pounds of leftover nitrogen, you just take your parts per million times eight. So that'll give you your, that'll give you your pounds of, of carryover nitrate nitrogen. Also on your soil test, you'll get uh, a number for your organic matter, but this, we use this credit also as that organic matter during the growing season will uh, mineralize by, uh, by the soil microbes and give you uh, what I call free fertilizer, but uh, it'll give you some uh, nutrients for the plant by the, the breaking down of this uh, organic matter. So the higher your organic matter, the more uh, nutrients you'll get during a growing year. Uh, here's just a picture of a soil test. What it does is, as you can see, it has the sample depth and uh, if you watch, look it over to nitrate nitrogen, you'll see you have a, a number 10, that was a shallow sample, zero to eight inches. And also your, your deep, eight to 36. In this case, 
on this soil test, they went to 36 inches. And uh, that was two parts per million. Now, for us, we used to require to go down to 36 inches for the deep sample, but we changed that. And so you only need to go down to 24 inches for your, for your deep sample. This is an example of, of the report form that you need to fill out. Probably a lot of you are familiar with this already, but uh, there might be some new producers uh, that uh, might be looking at this for the first time. It just uh, starts out with your your legal description. And then if you have a, a farm name, you can list that, it's, it's optional. But if you call it an example, the line one there, they, they call this farm the West 80. So you can put that down and that will be recorded right with the legal description. So in the future, if, if you can't remember the legal description, but you say, well, I call that farm the West 80, we can look it up, we can look it up that way. Uh, and if it's irrigated or not, and then the crop you grow, you grew uh, the previous year, and approximate yield, and acres, and if it was corn, uh, how much nitrogen you used. Uh, if you were split applying, you know, as in uh, the case of the third line here, this producer put 100 pounds on pre-plant, uh, put 50 on. Uh, side dress or maybe through the pivot. Inhibitor used, uh, This they did use an inhibitor here, yes. Uh, and then a crop plan for the coming year. In this case, uh, this producer is gonna plant all corn. So then it's uh, the next column I ask you, your expected yield, you know, what, what's your yield goal? And, and we wanna be uh, realistic here, I mean, uh, if you've been raising 240 bushel corn the last couple of three years, you don't want to put a yield goal of 280 or 300 uh, because that's just not a realistic. But what they suggest is taking your yields the last five years and get an average of that uh, and add up five years and uh, divide by five and then take that number times uh, 1.05 and then that would be a realistic yield goal to put to put in uh, column 11. Column 12 asks you your deepest soil sample. Uh, and as again, uh, in this case, the deepest you need to go is 24 inches. Also on the back of this report form, as you can see, we have columns one through 19 listed and there's a uh, uh, directions in there on how to fill out each column. Uh, and again, what, what you're seeing here is uh, column 11 is your expected yield goal. There's an example here of, of five years average uh, and then taking it times 1.05. In this case, and say in this case, this producer has a 280 bushel yield goal. So we talked about the deepest soil sample taken. In this case, this producer went down to 36 inches. And so that would be the, you would uh, be the deepest soil sample you took. There goes 36 right there in column 12. Column 13, ask you your percent organic matter. Uh, again, we go back to our soil test. And as you can see, the, what's circled here is our percent organic matter. And uh, in this case, it came back as uh, 2%. So that would go, you'd use 2% and put in column 13. Okay, the next column says, uh, what's the UNL total nitrogen needed to raise 280 bushel corn with 2% organic matter? So for that, we use table one, which is in your packet that we will send you when, when you get the form to fill out. These, these tables and charts will be sent, be sent to you. So it's a matter of uh, lining up your organic matter with your yield goal. So the range of organic matter is on the top line. It goes from one to 3%. And if you have an organic matter higher than 3%, uh, we just stop at 3%. I, that's kind of what the uh, university uses. So, And then uh, the yield goals are on the left. 
from 120 to 300. So in this case, we have a 280 bushel yield goal, which is highlighted on the left and 2% or organic matter. So where those two intersect is 293. So that would be our starting pounds of nitrogen needed. And that would be your answer then for column 14. The rest of these columns are potential credits that we can take off of our starting number of 293 so that, that uh, we use these credits that'll make us more efficient. Uh, we won't be putting on extra nitrogen we won't need. So as for soil nitrate parts per million, so we need to go back to our soil test. And uh, as, we, as we talked about earlier, we had 10 parts per million in our shallow sample, which is zero to eight inches, and two parts per million in our eight to 36, or our deep sample. Now, we need to average these parts per million because we're not even we're not working with equal amounts of soil you know so uh, we have 24 inches in our deep sample and only eight inches in our shallow so to make this equal uh, we've just developed a spreadsheet uh, and it works on the same premises as uh, figuring our beginning uh, nitrogen number is that we have a range of uh, part, shallow parts per million on top and deep, and deep parts per million on the left. So again, uh, uh, our shallow was 10 parts per million, which we have highlighted on top. And our deep was two parts per million. So again, where those two numbers intersect, in this case, uh, that'd be five parts per million. So we, we have to look at this table and average the shallow deep to get an accurate parts per million. So that would go in uh, column 15, which is soil nitrate parts per million. Now, column 16 is asking for resoil, residual soil nitrate, nitrogen in, in pounds per acre. So to get the, the answer for this column, you, you always take your answer in parts per million, which is five in this case, always take that answer times eight. Now that's a constant number, eight. So in this case, when we take our parts per million number of five times the constant number of eight, uh, eight, and that gives us 40 pounds of credit that we can take off of our starting number of 293. Now the next column asks from N from previous crop, this would be if we had a legume such as alfalfa or soybeans, we would use a table six to determine this number. Uh, and this will be a ta these tables we send out to you also. As you can see, soybeans are worth 45 pounds of nitrogen credit. And then there's uh, alfalfa and different uh, degrees of, uh, of stands. Uh, a good stand is 150 pounds. And even a poor stand of alfalfa, an old thin stand, it'd still be worth 90 pounds of nitrogen credit. But, but in this example, we had corn the previous year, so there would be no nitrogen credit. So our, the, uh, the number you would put in this column would be zero. Okay, next column asks for nitrogen from other sources. This would be if you applied uh, uh, some type of animal manure. And again, we have a table, table eight, uh, has a different uh, credits to take for uh, different types of animal manure. Let's just say for our, our example, we're going to say beef feedlot manure, and we put uh, five tons an acre on. So we get four to five pounds of nitrogen per ton. So that would be 25 pounds we could put in here for a credit. So to come up with our final answer of what the University of Nebraska would recommend as far as nitrogen to raise 280 bushel corn with our credits off the soil test, we would start with 293 and we'd take 40 pounds of credit off for our carryover uh, and then 25 pounds of credit for our feedlot manure. So our final answer would be 223. So they're saying you need 223 pounds of nitrogen to raise 280 bushel corn with 2% organic matter and then the credits from the soil test. Again, uh, all of the uh, answers to filling out these columns are on the back of the report form. And also we have a good supply of the watermark sensors and uh, 
we have that equipment on hand. Uh, so if you if you're needing something to put in one of your fields to measure soil moisture, get a hold of us, and we will install it for you with the first year. We'll get, get you all set up either with the handheld or the data logger. Uh, we'll we'll get all that installed for you if it's your first year, and. Uh, and then uh, always, if you have questions on filling out the form, please give us a call. We'd be glad to help you out with that. Mm -hmm.